This video is for George. Now, George, you walked up to me in the middle of pick and pay and said, you're 22 years old, you're stuck in a dead end job and you have a baby and you asked me for advice. Now, I did give you advice that day, but I thought about it a bit more because it really bothered me. So I notes down every single thing I think you need to hear just to give you some direction. Now, this video is for George, but I think it could help anybody that just needs some sort of direction in their life. George, this whole support a kid at a young age situation isn't going to be a walk in the park. But what it is, is a great foundation for an amazing success story. Now, what I would suggest is you make the best of it because your story is going to be an inspiration to thousands of people. Now, let's talk straight. You have to forget about luck, especially thinking that it's favoring every single other person but yourself. Breaking out of your current situation means you getting something that other people want. Now, right now, the only card that you have is your time because you told me that you have no skills. And I will be honest with you, at first, it's a tough grind, trading a lot of your time for almost no return. Right now, the only goal that you should have is to provide for your family while learning an important, high, valuable skill. Yeah, your family might go through some suffering. Actually, they will go through suffering, but they rather go through that now while they're too young to remember than later when they're too old to forget. Now, this video isn't just a motivational speech. It's a real wake-up call because before you know it, you'll blink and you're 30, 40, or 50 years old and you're stuck in the same situation or worse. So to all the Georges out there, you got this. Step one is to cut every expense, and I mean every single one. No more going out. If you're hungry, tough it out. Okay, that may be a bit extreme, but what I'm trying to say is that if it's not a basic need, it shouldn't be making it into your trolley. As for clothing, what you got in your wardrobe should be what you wear in for the next two years. No exceptions. Keep it simple. After work, you head straight home. Ideally, home is where your parents are, but if that is not an option, you need to find a way to make it as budget-friendly as possible. This means being in an outbuilding, getting a couch, or something that just has the least amount of cost attached to it. If you need to bunk with other people, sadly, that's what you will have to do for now. The biggest thing is that you got to forget about pride. If you can ask someone for help and they're in a position to help you, ask them. Step two, increase your income. Even though you already have a job, you need to use your free time to apply for different jobs closer to the one that you want. If you're not happy with your current role, find something else that you want to do. And if you can't, I'd recommend getting a sales job. Many entry-level positions don't demand that much experience and they don't have the worst starting salary. Now, if you don't want to do another job on top of this one, maybe start driving Uber. And if you don't have a car, save up for one. Every single person watching this video, you need to stop expecting to become a millionaire in three months. Increase the length of your goals, grind for years, and I promise you'll get there. Why do you think it's okay to give a degree at university four years of your life just to get a basic salary at the end of it when instead you can't even give a business or any type of venture more than three months? It's all about time, consistency, and how much effort you really put into it. Step three, start selling. And if you have nothing to sell, sell other people's stuff and take a cut off the profits. Once you've got the hang of it, shift gears and start learning how to buy things cheap and then selling it for more. You can start flipping things from shoes to gaming things to furniture to cars to eventually even houses. Just always don't let your mindset stop you. Don't let the sky be the limit when there's footprints on the moon. And also it's common sense, but the bigger the item, the bigger the profit. So keep the momentum going. On the final note, I picked up the strain in your voice when we discussed your situation. It seemed like you were grappling with uncertainty, unsure of the next steps that you have to do. Remember, the heaviness that you're feeling is often tied to a sense of hopelessness that is attached to having limited options. When that feeling hits, reframe it. Consider it more as ignorance than sadness. Look at it as it's signaling a lack of knowledge and not an insurmountable despair. You need to understand that you have the power to change your situation by gaining more information and taking control of your circumstances. You mentioned working for me for free, but unfortunately, I have no need for low-skilled labor. I need high-skilled people that can better me and my business. That's why I make valuable content on this channel. Utilize your high skills, land a well-paying job, aim higher and get further every single day. I suggest getting into sales and once you're in, work relentlessly. Work as hard as you possibly can until your fingers practically bleed. You need to understand this, that luck is not going to swing your way. Breaks won't just fall into your lap. You need to take it by the horns and force it for yourself. Become so outstanding that they can't ignore you. And you know what the best part is? You can literally do this in under a year. 
So here's my advice. The first step is cut every cost, trim it all down. Second step is to work more to make more. Apply for more jobs, get better and level up. And step three is to learn how to sell. Start off with cheaper items and scale your way up. The game here is just constantly trading your way higher and higher and higher. George, I know you're in a tough spot and I'm really hoping that some of the words I just threw at you really hit home and that it really makes you think about where you want to be in the future. I get it, it's challenging. One thing that struck me when I saw you was how well you were dressed and that you had shopping bags from Nike. And I wasn't going to bring this up, but unfortunately, it's quite a tricky situation. Sadly, you can't be dressing like a millionaire when you can't provide basic needs for your family. I want to reiterate something that you already know. When things are tight at home, spending on non-essentials should be the last thing on your list. But I get it, especially when you're younger and you're surrounded by people that have always been in tough situations, causing their perspective of money to be very different to what it should be. Honestly, it's tough when everyone around you is struggling and they might not understand the new things that you are learning or trying out. So here's the real deal. Failure is inevitable. And when you do fail, which you will, these are the people that are going to be first to tell you, I told you so. But I like to take this situation by looking at the concept of 99% right, 100% wrong. This means that 99% of the time they'll be right until they're 100% wrong. Anyone betting against your success journey is usually right in the short term. It's like when your parents say you'll break up with this girl, you'll break up with this girl, you'll break up with this girl. They are not right 99% of the time until you find the one that you marry and then suddenly they're 100% wrong. So my best piece of advice in this situation is change your information diet. Ignore the opinions of people that aren't aligned to making you better. The best way to stay poor is to listen to poor people about how to get rich. You're already doing a great step forward by consuming good content like this channel and trying to better your information. Keep doing more of that and I'm sure you'll grow. Your world now revolves around you providing for your baby and anybody that is not adding any benefit to George 2.0, they shouldn't be there. Invest your time and your money wisely into the people and things around you. I don't know your current job or how much you're earning, but I'm going to assume the worst, that you're getting minimum wage and you're working like 80 hours a week. I respect your hustle and that's the exact reason I'm making this video out towards you. But it's time that you realize that your time deserves more value. Now, the people around you might label you as extreme or unbalanced for the season that you're currently in, but my words to that would be embrace it. Yes, be extreme and unbalanced for now, because if you don't take decisive action, five years will fly by and you'll be in a worse off position. You need to live your head way above the water, because right now it seems like you're barely keeping afloat because of all the stress and that's causing you not to know your steps forward. To lower down the water level, all you gotta do is cut down your time and money budget. I'm gonna throw an extreme idea at you, and it basically consists of you making a lot of sacrifices now so that you can have a better future later. Currently, your spending focus should be exclusively on food and shelter. Basically, all you gotta do is drop everything else and bring it down as much as humanly possible. One exception I will allow is a timer. You can literally get one for like 80 Rand. Now, this is not your phone, it is a dedicated timer. What you're gonna do is you're gonna set it for four hours a day, every single day. And whenever you look away from your work, you stop the timer. During these four hours, you have to engage in real focused work aiming to acquire every skill that you put in your mind to. This timer essentially becomes your accountability partner, ensuring that you are dedicating this time solely to developing the skill. Now spend the rest of your time becoming the most exceptional job applicant in the world. Now I did not say use this time to apply for jobs, but instead you use this time to become the best candidate that has ever applied for these jobs. Now you might be thinking, but I don't have experience. Well, that's where you gotta make up for it. You need to show them your hard work to cover up for your lack of experience. Don't do everything half-heartedly like 99% of all the other people that apply for these jobs, where they just copy and paste the same generic message, cover letter, or just CV in general, just to send it to every single job that they see. You need to take the extra step, go the extra mile, and literally come up with like personalized messages that you send to every single job. Another way that you can go the extra mile is looking for the HR recruiter, the head of talent, the director of whatever, finding them on LinkedIn and sending them a personal message saying, I've applied for this job, I really look forward to it or whatever. Go the extra mile. Now, you can find these people quite easily on LinkedIn and if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, go make one, it's free. 
When you submit your CV for a job application, attach a personalized cover letter that is specific to the job. Skim through the company's website, look at their job description, and kind of form that cover letter to exactly what they are looking for. Basically, you're going to highlight how you can best contribute to exactly what they need. Every single employer wants to see that you'll go above and beyond. So that's exactly what you need to demonstrate that you're going to be doing. I'm not exaggerating when I say you should write a custom message to 20 people in each of five different companies, giving them a personalized message saying what, that you applied for this job and that you're looking forward to it. Now, I know it might take four hours a day, but it's going to be worth it. Now, tell me, what's going to happen when you send it to these 20 people from these five different companies? Absolutely nothing, because luck is not on your side. But what you got to do instead is be relentless. Do you think that if you keep on doing this every single day for the next six months and apply to a thousand companies, not a single person will give you a chance? I'm certain that someone would give you a chance if you did that. So what do you do when somebody does give you a chance? Don't talk about it to everyone. Shove it in everyone's face by your actions. Be silent and let your hard work speak for itself. Look at what the top guy does and basically do twice as much. Basically, you got to be Kobe Bryant in every situation. Now, if you're not familiar with Kobe's story, in basketball, you're only required to do one or two practices a day. But Kobe, he did three practices every single day. And he only did this to outpace everyone. In the beginning, he was behind, but then he caught up with them. And eventually, he surpassed them because he continued outpacing their hard work. And eventually, he got to the point where nobody could really catch him. The person at the top of the game in your field or in the field that you want to get to probably works a lot harder and longer than you do. You can't just match their effort to get ahead because they'll always be in front. You need to match their current effort and then put on your extra push to get ahead of them. When they clock out, that's when your real work begins. That's when George 2.0 begins. I want you to remember three words. Volume negates luck. If you're not getting interviews, crank up the volume. Send one personalized message a day, then two, then four, then ten, until you get to the point where you can't send anymore. And then the next day you do the exact same thing. You do it again, day after day. Make it a routine. And for the opportunities you really like, go even further. During your lunch break, stop by, introduce yourself to the different people, say that you're really excited about this opportunity to learn more from the company and to just join their environment. Say that you're not a weirdo, but you're just doing this to stand out amongst the rest. That goes a long way. You gotta keep playing the game and persist. Don't rely on luck, rely on volume. Because regardless of race, color, or socioeconomic background, if you do something a million times, it's going to give you an advantage. Sure, some backgrounds might have more of an advantage than another, but if you do something a million times, all you need is that one yes. Here's a lesson I want you to drill into your mind. There's a significant amount of money and opportunity waiting on the other side of being willing to be rejected by a stranger. If you get rejected a thousand times, you're not in a worse off position. Actually, you're in a better off position because you now have the experience of speaking to a thousand different people, asking them to give you a job. In either case, you win by doing and by doing, you win anyway. The moral of the story is that you lose nothing from a no, but you stand to gain everything from a yes. One yes can literally change your entire life. So if you're willing to face rejection, viewing it as a win, and seeing yeses as another form of winning, there is no way you'll be stuck in life. You need to move forward. The people around you, who, especially those that are going through financial struggles, might convince you otherwise. They'll say things like, why are you still doing this? Stop bothering those people. Lower your expectations. Slow down your goals. Those things are not for us. They'll feed you these doubts because in reality, you possess something that many people don't. And that's a harder and bigger monster to slay. But I want to remind you that the harder and bigger the monster, the more epic the hero. These challenges will be the stories that you tell, the talks that you will give to future Georges. If you're not willing to fail for yourself, be willing to fail for your child because this is your success story. This is what the foundation of your story is built on. Your struggles will become a beacon of hope for those struggling to break out of their situation. Now, when I initially met you, I didn't have all the time to say this to you. So I'm really hoping that this video gives you some context into what I think. I can confidently say to everyone watching at home, from all of us here at The Success Equation, we're rooting for you. So if you want a full tutorial on how to sell and take a lot, check out this video. And if you want to know how to turn 1,000 Rand into millions of Rands, check out this video. Stay blessed.